Hello and happy gaming, everybody. My name is Dark Sage Walker, and in a strangely unprecedented but also strangely second time it's happened, the poll ended in a tie. Go figure. So I was left with the uh, with the option with the option of either waiting, which obviously isn't really going to, something that's going to happen, or I was going to be forced to break the tie myself and go with what I was more interested in. Now this is this is one of those things where I only actually break the break the break the tie. I don't vote myself unless that's the case. So. It was a matter of which princess did I want to see more. Did we want to see the cheery pink clad Princess Peach? Or the or the embodiment of Twilight from the realm of Twilight? And if you can't tell by the arcana that I chose, obviously I'm going with Midna. Midna to me is just a much more interesting character. And it's not to say that I dislike Princess Peach, far from it. But, this is, the, this is the character whose abilities I was kind of really looking forward to playing around with. So yeah, you'll have to forgive me if this isn't exactly what you wanted. But also understand that when the, in the case of a tie, I have to be the tiebreaker. So, at that point, we're going with whatever my whim says. And my whim says that, hey, I love me some mid -time. So, here, here is how I'm basing the run. Obviously, we're starting with the Dark Robe Venture, as that's not only does that adequately represent the Twilight, so to speak, but it also represents the. It also represents Midna's kind of darker nature, and I'll get into that a little bit more. But in being a Twily, she has a lot of magical ability, which throughout most of the course of Twilight Princess <clears throat> manifests itself in her ability to teleport. It manifests in her dark energy orb that she likes to fire off, and it manifests in the ability, in the idea that she uses her hair in order to perform in order to perform big strikes. And that that is that is being manifested with gra with grasping earth, which even though I hate this spell with a passion, it is the most accurate portrayal of her of her ability to use her hair as a means of striking at her enemies. It even has the thing where you extend out where you extend out the range of the ability and then let go for it to do its thing. So yeah, that's going to be her using her her hair as a sort of essentially hands to beat enemies up with. Everything else is pretty standard, your chaotic buster, your your whatever this is called. Chaos Crusher, Chaotic Buster. Anything else I find along the way, I'll have to evaluate to see if it makes sense. Um, in order to represent Midna's helmet, known as the Fused Shadow, I decided to start with the Chaos Visor. This is going to offer a little bit more of a critical hit chance to my Projectile Arcana, which I believe is going to be everything aside from the Grasping Earth. And that is our lot. So it doesn't honestly matter which which council member I start on, but the ones that would make the most sense to start at would be either Shu or Atlas. So let's see which one I get offered first. All right, Atlas it is. Let's just get him out of the way. All right, there we go. So I was saying about Midna's rather dark disposition. This is a character that's... I think the reason why she's a fan favorite Zelda character is because she goes through an awful lot of growth throughout the throughout the course of the game. And when you first meet her, she absolutely could not care less about Link in his quest. She's basically using him as a means to an end. And that manifests just in how she speaks to him. Her thought process and the idea that She's not necessarily worried about what it, what it is that he's going for. She's more worried about how she herself is going to be affected by this. And granted, she's going through some shit. I get that. But, it, as said, it's, a lot of it is for the sake of character. When she first meets Link, she basically doesn't give a fuck. She's like, oh, you're Link? That's nice. 
but she sees it as a way for her to get out of her own predicament and get out there to try to affect, affect the change that she's looking for. And by the end, we see we see her we see her become a much more well-rounded character. She still absolutely hates Zant, and frankly, who wouldn't as a douchebag? But she really does absolutely grow as a character, and it's evident in the in the idea that she yeah, that her and Link have that strong bonding moment. In the, what is it towards the middle or the like? either the middle of the game or like towards the like you know it's or the or towards the later portion but yes she actually she absolutely goes through a goes through quite a moment of growth there we go not a bad play And as I had mentioned about the Chaos Crusher last time I was using it, this is a spell that actually has two modes. It's got projectile mode and and summon orb right in your face mode. So I'm trying to switch back and forth between using those modes as they become relevant. So hopefully we don't end up making too many stupid mistakes. Then, of course, we're going with Chaotic Rift, not just because I like it, but because Midna's abilities are very much encompassed in her ability to teleport around. She basically disintegrates and reintegrates, just kind of at her leisure. So, teleportation makes the most sense for her to have. But, I mean, some other things were going to be much more difficult to manifest, such as her aversion to light, which, because of her twily nature, she actually could not... could not exist in the, like, non-twilight non version of Hyrule without just hiding in Link's shadow. But... Later on, through an event that, yeah, I know the game is old, but it's actually something I kind of care about not spoiling, so... So, for those of you who haven't played Twilight Princess, you know, your spoiler warning, but, you know, she isn't able to exist in light until, some, until someone sacrifices themselves and gives her the ability to do so. And yes, I am being a little vague. Sue me. Yay, I missed. Ha! <laughs> Suck it, Shadow Beast. Alright, okay, we can upgrade Grasping Earth. Not that I necessarily want to, but hey, it's something. Um, these spells don't really make a lot of sense. But because of someone's sacrifice in order to give me give Midna the ability to exist in the Twilight. I'm also incorporating some of what that character can do as as part of as part of the examination process. Can you please go away? I don't care about your fucking arrows. Alright, so yes, combat is going to be a little bit of a tricksy mistress right off the bat. But, with any luck, we'll find some very interesting things and get better at this as we go on. Now, what would be... 
what would be obvious and most and most efficient to work with would be to find find more projectile based arcana to use. But I also have to play this a bit more carefully because I am working with a much more limited health pool than usual. Which, yes, it's making us stronger to do so, but we also have to keep aware of the idea that because of that, we're a bit more vulnerable. Just like Midna is when she's in her imp form. And again, spoilers for a, for a much older game, for those of you who haven't played it, but the imp form is not Midna's true form. Her true form is actually even taller than Princess Zelda by like a head. And she's basically a she's basically a powerful Amazonian kind of sorceress type character. There we go. And I won't lie, I think Midna is easily my most favorite of Link's follower slash helper characters. Because, I mean, I have no problem with Navi, you know how I feel about fairies, but she was the unfortunate, the unfortunate recipient of the Never Shuts the Fuck Up award. And, you know, Tattle kind of had the same problem, or it might have been Tail, actually. I forget which of the two it was in Majora's Mask, but one of the two of them. And Fi, I don't know, she she somehow managed to be even more annoying than Navi. Navi was legitimately trying to help. Fi, I think, just... And again, I don't doubt that Fi was legit trying to help, but... Ugh, there were issues with Fi. Okay, getting beat up a little too hard here. Alright, I am in trouble here because I am not adapting well to the Arcana that I'm using. was one of the rooms I was most afraid of dealing with, but with it out of the way, I can hopefully move on and just find things that would actually help. You hear that game? I need things that would actually help! You know, unlike any of this, well, Scales of Babylon is amazing. But let me see what relics are available. You know, assuming I ever find the relic shop, seeing as finding a merchant at this point is unnecessarily hard at the moment. We will not be taking Ion Spike. We already have some spells that are a little bit slow on the draw. That would be a little too slow. So I say no to you, Ion Spike. No, get away! We need to find Anders! Anders will have the key to what we need. Or, you know, I'll never find it. Jesus. She was with her bottle? Okay. So, is there even a relic shop? I know I've got 6% of the map left to explore, but I'm having a hard time thinking that I'm going to find it. It just seems to be fucking nowhere. Alright, so what do we take? We take Amulet of Sundering. We take Yuffie's Shawl. Now we go sell this. And I suppose we'll take Scales of Babylon. 
Huh. 25% chance to get a free item and miss 3 out of 4. Scales of Babylon is going to do a good job at helping me reduce my cooldowns. Alright, so like I said, not doing so great, but also remember I did- I was at work at 9am this morning, so... Yeah, just feeling- feeling just a little bit worn out. Not incredibly, just a little. But to get back to what I was saying earlier, the idea that Midna does go through such a- such a, like, actual, like, character arc and change throughout the game, I think that's one of the reasons why she's such a such a beloved character in the Zelda community. Or at least amongst me. You know, just me. And apparently I'm the only one that's upset that she was that she wasn't a playable character in Smash Ultimate. And again, I find it to be a shame, because I think Midna's awesome. I love Midna. Apparently that raffle ticket is just a waste. You spent 200 gold on this! It will never trigger! Yeah, where, where do you think you're going, buddy? You can't escape my grasp. For it is earthen, you see! Ha ha! All projectile arcana deal increased damage. Um, I'm gonna think about that one. Because I don't think that's going to count for grasping earth, and I don't know if it's going to count for scales of Babylon. My guess is no it won't. Because by the end, you find her to be, or at least I found her to be an incredibly sympathetic and interesting character that I would just want to help out. And I also think that of all the helper characters, she's the one that forms the strongest bond to Link in general. And you can say, oh, but Navi spent so much time around Link, she... It's obvious that she formed a bond, and yeah, you're not wrong, but you never really got to see it. In Twilight Princess, you got to see the sort of bond that the two of them, that the two of them formed. Like, to the point where, you know, there's a reason why there's so much fan art of her and Link together. Not to sound gross or anything, but... game, because you perhaps let me cast my spells. Thank you. And like I said, of, of Nintendo's various princess characters, she's definitely one of the ones that I identify the most with. I really like Midna. 
I think she's a character that deserves a little bit more love than she seems to get. At least nowadays. Oh, look at me suck. But maybe I'm uh, maybe I'm underestimating the reach that that character has. Maybe more people do like her than I than I give it credit for. seemingly all that interesting? I don't know. Then of course there's Raging Inferno, which I like Raging Inferno, I'm just not sure I like the idea of having two charge spells. That having been said, I am going to take this. Now let's think about this a little little bit more carefully. Is Raging Inferno a good fit? I mean, I have no doubt that Midna could do it, and even if it is just casting shadow magic and saying, right, this is Raging Inferno now. By the way, for those unfamiliar with what shadow magic is, it's essentially a spell in D&D that allows you to mimic the effects of other spells and elements. Basically, you manifest the darkness to turn into something else, and even if it is just an illusion, it's, you know, still there. It's still having an effect. Yeah, my health is looking terrible, so... Let's, see. Let's take a chance and see if the and see if the raffle box, or the raffle ticket allows me the raspberry cookie box for free. As, first of all, I feel like I'm mathematically due for a freebie. But secondly, and most importantly, I could really use the extra health orbs. Simultaneously, I also think Midna would be a big fan of raspberry cookies, as they're simultaneously sweet and tart. So, come on, raffle ticket, do me a good. Raffle ticket, you suck. You're the worst. Alright, so now we need to really be on the lookout for things to help us out. You mean you could have bought a health potion, that would have solved some of your problems. Yes, hypothetical viewer, it could have, but I also didn't... But also, I was looking for something a little bit more long-term. Remember, Chaos Crusher at close range is good for offense. Chaos Crusher at long range is good for defense. And no. Even though Strongman's Hammer I think could be effective, I think it's probably better that I don't take it. You can go suck an egg, sir. Also, is it just me, or is Raspberry Cookie Box not doing anything? I know it's kind of hard to hard to say it's not doing anything when it's added for like a minute, but I'm also kind of desperate, so you'll have to forgive me if I'm feeling a little bit apprehensive. There we go. That worked out. Okay, really need health. Come on, game. Work with me here. Alright, there we go. Ah, 
time I'm actually getting Grasping Earth to work, I'm surprised. I think the last time I tried to use this spell, it was just a series of failures one after another. Maybe I'm learning to understand this spell a little bit better. Maybe I'm just getting lucky, who knows. What I do know is that I am still getting getting kind of kicked around, and that needs to be brought to an abrupt halt. Um, is there anything here that's pain? Armor of Resolve is probably something I could use. One sec. Oh, hello. Hold on, Raspberry Cookie Box did something. Sweet. Good bird. Yeah, look at Cecil go. He likes Midna too, doesn't he? The obvious response to that would be like, Midna? Who's that? What do we have here? Oh, hello! Bouncing bubbles. Oh, hey, it worked. Oh my god, it actually did something. Surprise. Bouncing bubbles I can definitely justify with Midna, as that once again goes along with the idea of spherical projectile attacks. And then yes, I will... Oh wow, it actually worked again. I'm really surprised. that, buddy. You deserve that spades! Hello, T of Mercy. What are you gonna do? Okay, so we've got a nice little, like, soft synergy between Raspberry Cookie Box and T of Mercy, so that's nice. And, you know, so long as I'm here, let's actually use this to kind of affect, affect that T of Mercy a little bit. Oh, hey, the potion was free, too. Oh, my God. Okay, we're... Just a moment. I may not have brought this up before, but the apartment where I live is really close to frequently used train tracks. So, yeah, I'll take the no Oh wow, it worked again. I'm really surprised. Nocturnal Sundial is something that I figure I figure makes sense for Midna. Not necessarily the whole Sundial part, but the Nocturnal part. And also, spells not going on cooldown can be fucking awesome. Scales of Babylon, you're killing it! There we go. Oh, and Knockout Boulder. Well, and once again, by the principle of throwing large spherical objects, I think that makes good sense. And again, judging by judging by how her attacks work in Hyrule Warriors, it's a lot of slapping things with the giant hand that is that is created via her own powers in conjunction with the fused shadow. Oh, I'm dumb. But not only just her own abilities in conjunction with the fused shadow, it's Okay, maybe you guys can stop at the fucking homing attacks? That'd be nice. Okay, can we stop now? 
Okay, that room was a fucking nightmare. That had nothing to do with necessarily just the enemies present. That room was just a goddamn nightmare. Alright, that was that was everything horrible that could that it could possibly have been. I hated that room. Those, both of those two rooms were just the worst. Um, I can see Midna using something akin to Tracer Barrage, but I've already got things that I like. And by the way, in case you're wondering why I'm holding on to Knockout Boulder even though I'm not necessarily using it, I plan on using it for the boss. Okay, this room is also hell. Alright, I am not having a good time. This level is fucking destroying me. Every fucking room. By the way, have I met my fuck quota yet? Oh yeah, I remembered why I didn't like grasping Earth half the time it didn't do anything. You know, those times in which I want it to do something, I throw the spell out and then it's like the hands go, nah, we're bored. Come on, Midna, meet me halfway here. Necessarily need it to, that's nice. I can't afford to pay that much health to get my robe upgraded, so yeah, we're just gonna have to say no to that. As much as I would like to have a robe upgrade. No, I cannot afford it. room has like infinite enemies. You'd think I'd be used to that room, I've seen it so many times, but no! No, apparently not so much. Alright, so once again I'm in a little bit of trouble. Go figure when every room just destroys you and rips through your self-confidence as if it were made out of paper mache. Prevents shock status. You know what? I will take that. Oh, raffle ticket did it again. Yeah, none of that is really good mid in the material, so I'll say no. So actually, raffle ticket's been saving me quite a bit of money here. 
Though, I, though admittedly, I do still feel a little vulnerable. Yeah, that was an awful amount of damage taken between basically two rooms, the game said. Yeah, how, how about we take all that self-confidence that you built up and just shred it down to a nice, fine little pulp. It's the fine little pulp you find in your armor. Now we're doing a little bit better. Um, water pulse agents. That doesn't seem like a very Midna technique. She isn't really one for summoning minions. She's more so one for just getting the job done herself. And I don't really have anything that works like Wolf Link because there's very little here that's, you know, very Wolf I mean, the closest thing I could think of to Wolf Link would be like the Earth Stomp agent, but I never found that. Oh, what am I doing? I was trying to cast the wrong spell, so maybe oops. So every time I cast that spell and nothing happens, the idea is of course that everything that I tried to hit was out of range of the spell, but is that strictly the case or does the spell just have a much more limited range than it appears to. Like, I'm legit trying to understand because I don't necessarily want to hate this spell. It's just not working for me very well. Like I said, it is about the closest thing I can think of to Midna's... <laughs> to Midna's essentially area of effect kind of semi-homing attack. And I am sticking with it because I because I'm committed to the whole this is this is what the character would use thing. And yes, I am quick casting that. I'm not just forgetting that I can Hmm, that's a maybe. No, I'm not just forgetting that I can charge it up. I'm quick casting it just to get just to get damage out there. Thanks, controller. That was exactly what I wanted. Well, here he goes blaming the controller again. Well, this time it actually was the controller. I knew exactly what I wanted. And apparently I was pressing just a tiny little bit diagonally. And the game said, oh, you want to fall into a hole? Okay. Even the bird thought that was a little racist. All right, so do I need anything here? No, but I think I will take that. Funny how that 25% probability is working out, is working out much more now than it was earlier. All right, so let's grab this and see if Nocturne gives us anything interesting that you know I can actually use with this build. Creeping tendrils is yours. What do you have for me, my friend? Um. Unfortunately, nothing that seems very Midna-like. We'll take that just to have something to take, but ultimately I'm just going to replace it with the boulder. There we go. Alright. Stygian Turtle Shell. Yes, I'll definitely take that. 
Which means I guess it's time to drop the raffle ticket, so bye raffle ticket. You were good while you lasted. Here we go. I guess ultimately what I'm getting at with this is I really like Midna and I wish they would do more with that character. Typically, when they like, there aren't a lot of Legend of Zelda spin-off games, so I guess, I guess I can't get too upset at the idea that they don't don't reuse many characters. I mean, yeah, there's Hyrule Warriors, but there aren't many other Legend of Zelda spin-off games. What about Link's crossbow training? What about Link's crossbow training? Yeah, that's how you sound right now, hypothetical Lynx crossbow training fan. Yeah, the only can the only thing Lynx crossbow training does is takes one of Twilight Princess's greatest bosses and turns it into a joke. So yeah, not not going along with that. Not for a second. Oh really? You just spawned in, you just get that automatic sneak attack critical hit? Okay, that time I wasn't expecting Nocturnal Sundial to work, so I was gonna throw a second charged one. And then, really? Raffle ticket again? Honestly, how, how much raffle ticket do you guys think I need? It's getting me a little much. So with there not being very many Legend of Zelda spin-off games, it's awfully, awfully hard to see Midna appear anywhere other than things like Smash and as references in other Zelda games. You know, and if what they're saying is true and the Breath of the Wild sequel is kind of like a darker retreading of the Breath of the Wild idea. Maybe let maybe let the Twilight Princess have an appearance there. Maybe let her be even like, dare I dream, a playable character. I would love that because everyone's already speculating that New Zelda will be a playable character, and I would be fine with that. I would absolutely be down for that. Because the idea that the wielder of the Triforce of Wisdom is essentially always just a MacGuffin in her own story is a little odd. To me. I would not mind the ability to play as essentially a magician in the Zelda series. Ow. Okay, so maybe a Zelda maybe a Zelda game where 
where Link and Zelda have to work, work a little bit more as a team would be well still would be much appreciated. Or like I said, just allow allow Midna to come back, even though the you know mirror, of, even though she shattered the mirror of Twilight. There's got to be a MacGuffin that lets her come back and do stuff. And if you're willing to play around with the writing a little bit, there's always a way to bring back a fan favorite character, or you know, just make her a playable character in Smash alongside Waluigi, and I'll be happy. That's all. That's all it really takes. Give me Midna. I want more Midna. Midna! So, there you go. That's the run. That's essentially Midna in a nutshell. Let me know what you guys thought. There were times in which I felt Grasping Earth was doing exactly what it should have been doing. In times, I w in, times in which I felt it was just taking the piss out of me, so... Anyway, let me guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Again, I thank you very much for spending time with me here. It means the world to me. Drop me a like, leave me a comment, let me know what you thought of today's run, and I will see you guys in a future video. I'm Dark Save Walker, and I will be seeing you.